Good morning, good morning everyone. We welcome you so much to this morning devotion. It's Thursday morning. We thank God because he has been very faithful. I am well and I am humbled this morning to bring the message. Delighted that the Lord has kept me and still confessing that Christ is the Lord in my heart. I'm happy to continue with this theme on the Leviticus uh, 6 and verse 13, which is reminding, uh, reminding us to keep the altar fire burning continuously and it must not go off. And we looked at these instructions which were given to the priests during uh, the journey when the Israelites were going to the promised land. We have studied the instructions given and how the priests were expected to keep watch throughout the night so that that sacrifice would burn until it is completely consumed. So their responsibility was to ensure that there is firewood on the altar, clean the ashes, you know, everything we looked at, changing the linen because whatever they were doing was very holy, disposing this ash in a very holy place because God is holy. And this is ceremonial cleansing was part of maintaining holiness. We looked at pursuing that God's holiness, what is required. And this far, we are now looking at which are the elements that shall help us now. Remember that was in old time. Now we are in the New Testament. The grace, uh, the grace of God is abounding. We are in the duration of uh, grace dispensation, the grace of God, where we no longer need all those activities that the Old Testament priests were given and Old Testament people, believers, who are supposed to continuously bring these lands and burn it on the altar. But now Christ has given himself as that lamb. He has sacrificed his life. We are now living at that time where we are supposed just to live a holy life by practicing this holiness and ensuring that that spiritual fire within us is still burning. We've looked at two logs that are supposed to keep the fire ablaze and we started with the prayers. We said that it is like um, the oxygen that is required when you're lighting fire so that it can uh, ignite the fire to burn. And we said without prayers, the spiritual man is equally dead. The spiritual man, uh, fire within this, uh, the spiritual man is already put off. And therefore, prayer is the key towards igniting the fire, setting it, as, it ablaze, ensuring that there is no day that it is put off. We looked at the second log, which is the word of God. And we say that it should be within us, meditating it upon, upon it every day, ensuring that it is building within until it bursts out like a pressure cooker, out like what Jeremiah would say, that your word is so full within me, I cannot contain it anymore. I have to speak it to the people so that they may understand. And also what Matthew records, that outside the out of the abundance of our hearts, our mouth will shall, uh, shall forever speak. So if the abundance within our heart is this word of God, then we shall speak it and we shall bring it to the people. And what are the results? When the people hear it, they uh, get faith. And also Joshua was told the reward of having or meditating the word of God every day and night, it is prosperity and success. Now, let us throw our third log so that our fire may continue burning. And this is praising God. Praising God keeps the fire burning. It keeps the fire ablaze. Now, there are two men we read in the Bible who were thrown into prison and even if they uh, because they had not done anything wrong because they had not uh, 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 they were not thrown because of any mistake they were cruelly whipped until their backs started bleeding these people also their feet were tied together so that they would be forced to stay in one place and this situation was very discouraging event for these brothers and uh, Anyone who would be in such a situation probably would not even look at God as a good person. How do you allow us to go into prison and we have not committed any error? For a Christian who has not known the importance or who has not understood that sometimes we are brought into trials so that we can seek God more, probably would have started 
asking why do we serve this God? But look at these two men. Despite their trouble, these people did not allow the fire within them to stop burning. Instead of despairing, these people, they began praising God. And even though they were chained up and surrounded by guards, the situation was uh, scary. These people did not let the fire within them go off. They took advantage of the situation, a situation that looked helpless, a situation that looked hopeless, a situation that looked as if God has rejected them, but they chose to rejoice. Acts chapter 16, verse 25. Acts 16, verse 25. Let's look at these men. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chain came loose. The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself, we are all here. The jailer called for light, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Cyrus. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke, to the, uh, they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his households were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole household. Praise the Lord. Now let's look at this log of praising the Lord. These two prisoners, Paul and Cyrus, they did not take or look at the bad side of temptations. They did not look at the bad side of the prison. They did not look at the bad side of this jailer who is uh, studying guard and guarding them so that they may not run away. They did not look at the bad side of the wounds on their back because they were whipped until their, back or, uh, their backs were, or, were bleeding. They did not look at the pain that has been put to them by being chained at the legs such that they were static, they would not move, but they listened to what was inside them, what was full in their hearts. Because once we are filled with the word, once we are filled with the goodness of the Lord, it must burst out, out of the abundance of our hearts. The mouth will forever speak. Now, these people were filled with praises. These people what had been fed within them is the word of God and the goodness of God. So they did not want the situation which was at hand, the physical situation, to drain them uh, to stop rejoicing in God's goodness. So the prisoners were not the only ones who heard what these people were saying. God also was listening to them when they were singing praises. And when God heard the song, he began also to join. Probably he would tap his feet in the melody of the songs that his people were, were singing. And once the God, God was happy and joined in the singing, this caused earthquake. This brought about the shaking. This brought about the shaking of the prisoners' strongholds or the prison stronghold, the shaking of the prison doors, the shaking of the chains which had bound them together, and this brought them down off Cyrus and Paul's hand, and these people were set free. The jailer also had the singing. The jailer also had the power in the music that people were, uh, these people were singing and also saw the miracle of the earthquake shaking the stronghold of this uh, prison. And he and his entire family became believers that day. When they began to praise God, this stirred up the fire 
even within the prisoner, the jailer, and also within their heart, the fire kept on burning. We are called that amidst our circumstances, how terrible they are, let us keep focusing on the praises to the Most High. Amidst challenges of life, it doesn't matter what form of challenge you are going through. Yes, it may look like a big mountain. It may look that it is the end of the world. But look at these two jailers. These two men, they will really make us happy. They will make me happy because I see the power that is there in giving God's praise. And I was thinking about... Um, when we were in primary school, those people who were there during the regime of President Moy, any time that he would just be passing, not even coming to school, well, the, the, the learners would be taught songs to praise the president as he passes by. And then people would uh, uh, stand in file uh, along the road and would sing songs of praising the president. And once he would stand there remember, uh, uh, and, and listen to the songs, he would join in the song and finally he would ensure that the community in that area receive any infrastructure that they were lacking. Be it a good road, classrooms in the schools, and people would receive what they needed. If an earthly king would uh, reward the people by just praising his work and praising him, what about our heavenly father? Let us be praising God even when the situation is not allowing. You can take a hymn book and sing to him. Tell him you are mighty. You are the rock of angels. Remind him of the goodness he has done to you in the past. And that way we are going to um, prosper in our lives. So praise prepares our hearts for the fire. It will rekindle the fire that had already started going off once we start praising. And when we tell God how great and mighty he is and the mighty things that he has done in the past, it will also change our attitude. Instead of looking at the challenge, we look at a mighty God who is able to help us overcome these challenges. So we stop thinking about ourselves and we begin thinking about the greatness of God. We stop telling challenges how defeated we are, but how great God is and the God we are carrying within us. And this rekindles the fire and help us to keep the fire brighter and brighter each day. We are able to confess to the devil that this is just a time we are passing through. And once we are through, then we are going to confess to him how great our God is. Our God will show his might once we praise him. Because once we are praised, even in our earthly life, it feels good when people tell you, well done, you have done good. Excellent in this area. The same case happens to our God. If we tell him how excellent you are, how mighty are your deeds, how great our God you are, then he adds more blessings. He takes us out of the situations we are in and he allows us to enjoy the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So let us keep the fire burning by singing hymns, by singing choruses, by singing all forms of praise songs to our mighty God. Let us learn to worship God even amidst challenges and situations. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen.